Okay, let's do chapter 21, conservation and biodiversity, but this is just a summary because uh, I'm not sure if we have a time to go over this in class. So importance of biodiversity. Biodiversity exists at multiple levels of organization, and that includes number of species, genetic diversity, chemical diversity, and ecosystem diversity. There are described number of species in the world, uh, numbers about 1.5 million, an estimate for no total number of eukaryotic species on Earth vary, but we think it's, it's in the order of something like 10 million. And the biodiversity tends to be higher in the tropics. Here's an example of tropics shown here. <clears throat> this is a tropical rainforest in Madagascar with a high biodiversity habitats. Only about 10% of original coastal lowland forests remain still. And the research suggests that half of original biodiversity has been lost. <clears throat> So ecosystem diversity, the variety of ecosystems on earth from coral reefs to prairie enable, this is, enables the great diversity of species to exist. Here's a coral reef, here's a prairie, and the number of species exist on different habitat is estimated here. Map of amphibian species shows that there's a trend towards higher diversity at the lower latitudes. So here's the equator and the higher diversity is shown in red colors. And these are all areas of high diversity uh, in terms of amphibian, in terms of number of species. And this is actually observed for uh, different uh, taxonomic groups, most of taxonomic groups. And many of the medicines were first discovered or derived from living organisms. And they're often secondary plant compound, right? And animal toxins and antibiotics can be produced by bacteria and fungi also. Here's a Madagascar periwinkle. <clears throat> Has many uh, medicinal properties. It's the source of vincristin. Uh, it's a, a drug that's used to treat lymphomas. And we expect this to continue. More medicine, medicines are expected to, to be discovered. But the loss of biodiversity will impact the number of pharmaceuticals that's available. And uh, biodiversity also may provide psychological benefits because you're surrounded by different animals and more beautiful nature. The uh, uh, crop diversity is a requirement for food security, and it's being lost because we do monocultures and um, and so on and so forth. We only use one species of crop to plant, and the loss of wild relatives to the crops also threaten our ability to make new varieties. And the ecosystem support farming through pollination, nutrient cycling, pest control and soil development and maintenance. And the loss of biodiversity threatens these functions and risks making the food production more expensive or even impossible. Many of the wild food sources are aquatic, but only few are being managed for sustainability. And the fisheries ability to produce protein for human population is being threatened as a result, especially when extinctions occur. Here's a picture of Svalbard Global Seed Vault. And this is in Norway. And this is storing all the seeds for Earth's diverse crop uh, plants. So what's, what's threatening the biodiversity? The core threat is the unsustainable human activities. Habitat losses occur from uh, deforestation, river dams, and other activities. Uh, also, invasive species introduced by humans and overharvesting causes extinctions. Oil palm trees being planted, brown snakes are also um, invasive species, 
that are killing, uh, replacing the natives. And invasive fungus killed this frog here because it doesn't have any defense. Um, and the atmospheric CO2 fluctuate in, in cyclical matter as seen here over the past half a million years. And if you look at that, fossil fuel use has caused a big increase, increase in the levels of CO2. So it was never above about that level or never about, above about that level and it's just skyrocketing now. <laughs> and this obviously leads to climate change uh, that will significantly impact the biodiversity in the coming century. And here's a retreating glacier shown. Here's 1938. Level of glacier was about there. And now it moved to there. Now it's just completely disappeared. That's about, there has been about 1.33 degree increase since 1900s. So how do we preserve the, the biodiversity? There has been five mass extinction of losses more than 50% of all species that's visible in the fossil records. And the recent extinction are the basis for estima estimating uh, the extinction rates. And the co uh, correlation, correlating species loss to habitat loss is another way to estimate ex extinction rates. 90% habitat loss corresponds to 50% species lost. So protecting the national parks and global hotspots can help preserve that diversity. Currently about only about 11% of surface is protected. And those protected regions are shown here in red hotspots. But, uh, and the biogeography can be shown to design and Op, design an optimal preserve and the climate makes the but the climate makes that preserve and its future uncertain and, uh, um, habitat restoration might be useful in terms of restoring previous biodiversity level there's a given wolf pack in Yellowstone has been identified as a keystone species and introducing them back may restore the habitats. And some of the zoos have conservation programs and captive, uh, captive breeding programs. And that may also help with the preserving biodiversity. And they also have useful role in education as well. Okay, that's all I have for this chapter.